Revelation chapter 2 verse 8 to 10 the scripture says and to the angel of the of the church in Smyrna writes this thing said the first and the last who was dead and came to life I know your works your tribulation and your poverty but you are rich and I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not but are a synagogue of Satan do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer indeed the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation ten days be faithful unto death be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life so um persecution is one thing that you know the church relatively has shied away from so um, it's not something that we talk about often. It's, it's more like sufferings have been taken out of our curriculum. So we focus on you know how we are to be blessed. We focus on how we are to you know prosper, be in health, even as our souls prosper. But in the curriculum of our Master Jesus, persecution was an integral part of that lesson of his lessons. I remember at one time Peter was asking him, We have left you. What will be our profit? What shall we gain? But I told them, You will gain even in this world. You will gain houses, you will gain um, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, houses, and all of that. With, and he added, With persecution. And then in the life to come, you will gain eternal life. So, so Jesus never never taught a gospel that tribulation or persecution or suffering was not a part of and that that begins to give us the understanding why the church in its early days they were able to face persecution with joy there were not people that do what God because of persecution. There is a place in the book of Acts. The scripture says that when the, the disciples were warned and beaten and all of that, they began to rejoice and thanking God that they were found worthy to suffer persecution for Jesus. That was the kind of heart they had. That was the kind of mind they had. Imagine being beaten. Imagine being persecuted and you are rejoicing you are retracing it's as though let's say two were beaten and they they got back home so their conversation was not was not hi how we are suffering the conversation was like how many how many strokes did you receive for jesus oh that one would say i received 30. he said ah my own pass your own i received 38. that was the kind of mind they had because jesus did not take away the teachings of suffering from his, his doctrine it was part of what he taught his disciples. So there were people that, that counted it joy to go through suffering for Christ. I'm not talking about suffering as a result of ignorance or suffering as a result of your maybe indiscipline or laziness or something. I'm talking about suffering for the gospel. And if the church does not return to that, you know, it, you'll find out that because the difference between the church in these early days and the church now is that we have we have believers now that a little a little suffering they've started accusing God, they've started warning God, Lord, if you don't do anything, I'll leave you. I give you one more week. If nothing happens, I'm going to go my way. <laughs> but that was not how the disciples did it. That was not how the first apostles approached it. That was not how. Because we see this church. Jesus was writing to the church in his mind. I was telling them, I know your persecution. I know your tribulation. I know your suffering. I know that you are in poverty. Because for that church, they were not allowed to do business. Is there anybody that does not pledge allegiance to the, the deity uh, of the land? You know would not be allowed to to have a, a certain expansion in business so you can there's a limit to your growth there's a limit to the business you can do there is a limit to the kind of business so these people were not lazy these people were not indisciplined it was because they said we will not bow to another god that was the reason that they were poor that was the reason that they were in poverty so you must for you to um to engage in business in that land you must swear allegiance to their god 
and these people chose to remain faithful to God and therefore they were in poverty so Jesus was telling them I know your persecutions I know your tribulations I know that you are in poverty but he told them you are rich so it means that when our focus begins to change when our hearts begin to change when our, the, the the priority in our heart begins to change that's where we can bear or suffer our persecution for, for for jesus because when you read through this scripture in the book of revelations you find out that the thing what jesus was doing was that he was consolidating their um their heart posture for eternal things so he told them when you are faithful to the end i will give you the crown of life so he was he was consolidating where their heart was positioned because their heart was not positioned on earth it was already in heaven but he, he he was just consolidating that posture so if any man's heart is not set above it's just time before he denies jesus and of course we know that denying, denying jesus. jesus is in the daily affairs of life when you are faced with the option of doing this thing that will bring you massive income and which is not the right way and following the way of the master what will you choose so if your heart is not set above if your heart is not set on the glory that is above if your heart is not set on the coming glory you will deny jesus even before you realize it so the apostle will say in romans chapter 8 verse 17 and 18 and if children then heirs so he was writing about the sons heirs of god joint heirs with christ and will be rejoicing he said if indeed we suffer with him then he brings in suffering so you see that suffering was an integral part of their doctrine he was bringing a revelation of, of sons which is what you know we all teach but in addition he said if we suffer with, with him that we may also be glorified together for i reckon i reckon <laughs> i love king james here he said for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us so apostle paul was uh, he, his his heart was steadfast on the coming glory he was not attached to the glory of this earth he was not that to the things of this heart so that was the reason that they could survive in persecution when the church was in in its early days persecution led them to expansion but if you bring persecution to the church and i'm talking about the church in nigeria i don't know about the church in other countries but the church in nigeria if persecution comes the way it came in the early church in the church in the early days instead of expansion people are likely <laughs> they will be they will be diminishing because people will will readily drop god because they have not been taught on the coming glory they have their our our hearts have not been have not consolidated on the glory that is coming our hearts are still attached to this world our hearts are attached to the things of this world so the prayer this morning is 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 is, is really a, a a heart cry to god that the Lord will begin to change our hearts so that we can focus. This is just one of the ways. Maybe um, on Saturday we will deal with another way to stand persecution. This is just one. When your heart is focused on the glory ahead, when you consider that the coming glory is greater than the one that the world offers, you will stand. No matter what, you will stand. That was what kept the disciples standing that was what kept the church in Smyrna standing despite the persecutions despite the sufferings despite the sufferings I, I i just i just imagine maybe they don't have food to eat certain days they will go hungry certain you know weeks they will go hungry three three days they've not eaten but they will still stand they will say i will i will rather die and jesus did not in quote help matters he said and he came and told them suffer till death <laughs> What kind of encouragement is that? I thought you just would come and say and say and say, um, don't worry, I'm I'm coming to to get you. He says, be faithful until death. Kai, be faithful until death. So our hearts must begin to to be set above if if 
we would not deny God in our journey. Can we begin to ask for mercy? In the ways that we have denied God, in the ways that we have we have considered the glory of this world much more than the coming glory, much more than the glory of heaven, much more than the glory of God, in whatsoever way that we have veered off, can we begin to plead and cry for mercy and say, Lord, that your mercy will come upon my life in the name of Jesus, Kamane Shatanivede. Geniande fellosia cabaravinetia, reteneno se vena cavina do shonata, leneno se van de cavalatia, there is the Lucian de Cadevarania suse feletea, e camampe shono copeleva, retene suso veneta, in whatsoever ways that we have denied Jesus, in whatsoever ways that we, we, we have, we have, we have, we have not taken up our cross and followed. Can we say, Lord? Lord, let your mercy prevail. Let your mercy prevail. He said, Whosoever wants to follow me, let him take up his cross daily and follow. Let him take up his cross daily and follow. In whatsoever ways that we have not taken up our cross, whatsoever ways that we have dropped the cross, can we say, Lord, let your mercy prevail. Let your mercy prevail in our lives. Lord, we return to you. We we return to you. We return to you. We return to you. Shanam berusavina. Rene ketone yana na mama susi yete ketena. Reno shata katiye susu fretema. Reke sundeleta. Elia no shanda kaparam deleta. Elia no sebeleta. Enko su venena. Reteni no kupeleta. Iko veneta. Eshunde kaparaliasia. Was it no shadrak mishaka na patneko? That said, Lord, O King. They were talking to the king. They were talking and they said, Ah, we know that God can save us from this fire. But even if he, he even if he chooses not to, he said we will not bow. We have gone past that level. We will not bow. We will not bow. We will not bow. Come the Kali Paravilea. These were men that chose to stand regardless of the, the repercussions, regardless of the consequences. They stood for God. They stood for the kingdom. Regardless, they, they damned the consequences. I am no so far away. Recoso venetena manakota shenika. Retulia no sebeneta. Engosi ete kaba. Residua kwande shanta rido so bene. Berusa banata kumpelena. Reteketulia na na papa pa. Enso na ika papa. Resuli eke para para ta. Lord, your mercy may find us. That your mercy may find us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, if we don't see the glory ahead, if we don't see the glory that Apostle Paul is writing about, say, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to come. If we don't see that glory, there will be nothing to reckon. No. We won't have anything to reckon. It was because Apostle Paul saw that glory. That was why he could consider and reckon that the sufferings of these times are not worthy to be compared to the to that glory. So can we begin to pray and say, Lord, open our eyes to the glory. Open our eyes to your glory. We, 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 we was in almost in the Christ. Show me your glory. That was in the in the old testament. Can we say, Lord, show us the glory that is to come? In the name of Jesus, let my eyes be unveiled to the coming glory. Let my eyes be unveiled to your glory is it possible it is possible to be in church and not encounter the glory and not have a revelation of the glory and not have a revelation of the glory it is possible it is possible can we cry and say lord help us to see that our eyes may behold your glory that our eyes may feast on your glory you would wonder, oh, what did Stephen see? What did he see? He said that I saw the heavens open. I'm seeing Jesus at the right hand. And that was his sight. And they were stoning him. They were stoning him. They were stoning him. That was his sight. If he did not see, 
if he did not have a foresight, he would not, he would not, he would not keep his head to be stoned though. Was the glory that he saw. Can we say, Lord, open our eyes to your glory? Open our eyes to the glory of the age to come. Open our eyes to the glory of the age to come. Open our eyes to the glory. Lamanto si veneka, le ruse fanamino kovalata, reze so fenetoa, and shanda ki pa venu se venekwapa, rete kutilia tapa minu kuveneta, resulia e kapa vene, resuno kupeva, and sunai tapande shanda ke follow, rete kutu we want to see you Ayo <laughs> Let the revelation, the revelation of your glory. And when I say revelation, it's, it's not just about your eyes being open to see one thing. It's, it, 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 it can come via scripture, it can come via an understanding that the eyes of our understanding may be enlightened to see the glory, to see the glory, to see the glory. Rate Shiana, Zenu Kwandeli Paravila Tosa, Enke Tosa Vila, Rete de Luma, Sufe de Kapa, Enke Kupa Pukwa, Resulia Kapa, Kitosa, understanding of your glory. Understanding of your glory, that our hearts may be set on that glory. Our hearts may be set on that glory. Oh Jesus. If your eyes does not behold that glory, you cannot stand when when there are options, when you have options for you know to choose between God and another thing. If your if your eyes are not on that glory, you would you would you would you would easily sell out on God. Oh Jesus, that you may open our eyes, you may open our eyes, you may teach us, let us come into knowledge of your glory, come into knowledge of the coming glory, come into knowledge of the glory of the age to come. Oh Lord, that you may help us. Ayi <laughs> <laughs>